Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This has been a truly extraordinary and historically unprecedented hearing. It has frankly been an outrageous uh, violation of due process, a series of violations of due process, in fact. Let me review the past seven and a half hours. In the beginning of our proceedings today, I asked Chairman Nadler if Mr. Burke was appearing here as a staff member or as a witness, but the chairman gave strangely conflicting answers to that important question. When I objected under House Rule 17 that Mr. Burke was repeatedly and brazenly steamrolling over House decorum rules and using language that impugned the motives of the President of the United States and suggested he is disloyal to his country, Chairman Nadler insisted that those words could not be taken down and stricken from the record, saying, quote, the rules don't apply here because Mr. Burke is merely appearing as a staffer. But later, Chairman Nadler stated the opposite and declared that Mr. Burke was appearing to present the Democrat member's report as their representative, which would, of course, mean that the member rules should apply. Then Mr. Burke was allowed to switch places and turn from witness to questioner. That's extraordinarily bizarre, of course, but it's entirely consistent with this whole impeachment circus. As everybody knows, Intel Chairman Adam Schiff was allowed in the opening act of this circus to serve as the judge, jury, prosecutor, witness coach, and case strategy chief all in one. So much for due process. Under the Democrats haphazardly drawn special parameters for these special hearings, House Resolution 660, Mr. Burke was then allowed to join the elected members of Congress on this dais and ask 45 minutes of questions of his fellow witness, Mr. Castor. When he was argumentative, assumed critical facts not in evidence, engaged in speculation, and committed countless other violations of regular House rules and the federal rules of civil procedure, I objected, but was then ruled out of order by Chairman Nadler, who informed all of us that while House Resolution 660 specifically provides for objections, it lists none of them, and the Democrats have ignored every request of ours to obtain a list of what rules and objections would be enforced and applicable today. Again, so much for due process and fairness. A month ago, listen, a month ago, the Republican members of this committee formally requested all documents related to the impeachment investigation, but Chairman Nadler and Schiff withheld everything until, you know when? Saturday afternoon. That's right, less than 48 hours before this hearing, they dumped approximately 8,000 pages of documentation on us while we were back home in our districts. They intentionally made it literally impossible for us to review all material in any meaningful way, mere hours before this fateful hearing. What's worse is that the documents they decided to dump on us are not all of the underlying records we need to review, but rather only a partial, redacted, and biased subset of information that they think will advance their false narrative. And has been mentioned, as has been mentioned here, we're being allowed no minority day hearing, which is required by regular House rules. Now, I'd love to cross-examine Mr. Burke himself, but Chairman Nadler's special and still mysterious rules for this hearing won't allow it. I notice he's disappeared from the hearing room, I would love to ask him uh, under oath about his own biases. Because, you know, he hammered here over and over today the importance of fairness and objectivity and accuracy, and he insisted that everything here has to be unbiased. But if he was under oath here, he would be forced to admit that FEC records show that he has personally donated approximately $99,000 to Democrat candidates over the years, including sizable donations to Hillary Clinton for president, and also donated to past Trump opponents, including Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, and Kirsten Gillibrand. Mr. Burke appeared here as a fact witness and a finder of fact, but in our system, a finder of fact is supposed to be fair and impartial. He's supposed to be an umpire. The problem with all this, and the problem that everybody at home can see with their own eyes, is that the umpires in this high-stakes game are parading around the field on the, in the majority team's jerseys. The report of evidence released by Republican committee staff on December 2nd carefully documents that in the hearings that led us to this point today, Chairman Schiff directed witnesses called by the Democrats not to answer Republican questions. He rejected witnesses identified Republicans who would have injected some semblance of fairness and objectivity, and he denied Republican subpoenas for testimony and documents, violating the Democrats' own rules to vote down those subpoenas with no notice to Republicans. Chairman Schiff also publicly fabricated evidence about President Trump's July 25th phone call, and he misled the American public about his interactions with the anonymous whistleblower to selectively seek information to paint misleading public narratives. The anonymous whistleblower reportedly acknowledged having a professional relationship with Vice President Biden, and obviously his motives, biases, and credibility are essential to this case, but we can't question it. This is not due process, this is not the rule of law, and this is not how to impeach an American president, and this is not how we're supposed to run a country. It can't be. 17 out of 24 of our colleagues over there already voted to proceed with impeachments before we started all this. They've already made up their minds. They, they, were, uh, they were prejudiced before we walked in, but the American people are not. Fairness still matters, truth matters, and the people can see clearly 
that this is a sham. I yield back.